Welcome to Hardware Asylum. For those of you who have been following my subwoofer project builds, you may realize that those were all prototypes. This one in this video will be the final design. And for the most part, everything remains the same. We have the same box volume. We have the same 3D printed port. The only difference is we're taking a few extra steps to make this box look a little bit nicer. Now, as you can see, the enclosure is not quite finished yet, and I made a couple of changes from the prototype edition. In the front here, we have a three quarter inch piece of MDF. On the bottom is where the five and a quarter inch subwoofers are going to be installed. We're going to be 3D printing some feet that will raise this up off the ground and allowing the subwoofers to breathe. On the back of the enclosure, we have this recess here, and this is where our amplifier boards are going to be installed. So we'll have the various Dayton audio amplifier boards mounted here along with the DSP. We still have room available for signal processing if we want to add that later. Over top of this, we're going to have an acrylic sheet that will protect the amplifier boards and allow us room to install the various knobs and controls that we need to have to control those amplifiers. Now in some of the comments of the previous video, somebody was calling me out about how I wasn't using a countersink bit to get these screws to sit below the surface and well I picked one up. Now these are drywall screws but they work great in MDF and if we're going to countersink them then we'll just do a little bit of putty and fill up those holes and then to give this enclosure that home theater feel I'm going to be putting some red oak veneer and painting some of the other various MDF pieces that are going to be exposed now with all of that out of the way, let me go ahead and finish up this enclosure. We're going to go ahead and fill these screw holes, get the sides all sanded down, cleaned up, so that we can install the veneer. Now since all of these screw holes are going to be covered with a veneer, we're going to go ahead and just fill them with uh, <laughs> some Bondo. We have to mix this together until it's a nice pink color. Then we know that we have the hardener and the body filler mixed up well. We got some holes on the top to fill up and along the other side. So we'll come back when we're done. Now while all of the woodworking has been completed, we have one final task and that is with the port flange. This is the 3D printed part that I used on the prototype. We're going to use it again on this box. Now to install the port, we have a lot of different options that we can explore. Normally I would just use simple hot glue for something like this. It's what we used on the prototype box and it works extremely well. I mean, if it's Hot enough, it will go and bond directly with the MDF and whatever else you want to put in there, some PLA or ABS plastic. But I want to go with another option that I have been using for many, many years for quite a few projects. And that is fiberglass resin. It's a bit more liquid and it should soak into those first couple of layers of MDF and will also fill all of the gaps inside my 3D print. Mixing up fiberglass is a lot like mixing up Bondo. We have our resin. I'm gonna put this into the bottom of a Pepsi can. 
That's probably enough, but we'll put a little extra because we have a lot extra. And when you're dealing with this stuff, it is always a good idea to wipe the extra off of the threads before you put the cap back on. Ask me how I know. Once you mix up the fiberglass resin, you're on a clock, much like uh, any sort of catalyst-based material. So what we want to do is make sure that we have everything available and set and ready to go, including ways to clean up in case we make a mess. All right, I think we're good. I'm going to be using a bamboo skewer to go and mix up the chemicals. We'll be using a Q-tip to um, dab the catalyst resin onto our parts and onto our MDF. And we'll have about five to ten minutes before it becomes a nice gel and will not be and will not be workable anymore. I don't need a lot. I just put in six drops. Go ahead and put some on the MDF first. As you can see, it's kind of wetting into the MDF. That's what we're after. Okay. That should be good. There we go. We'll go ahead and put some around the outside. The nice thing about fiberglass resin is that once it has cured, it is completely sandable. And when we fill this in with Bondo, it will all just blend together. And actually the fiberglass part will sand a bit smoother than the Bondo will. There we go. We'll let that cure and we'll check it when it's done. It's been about 24 hours since I last recorded. Of course, it'll be just a couple of seconds for you. And as you can see, the port is stuck in there good. It's definitely not gonna go anywhere. So next step, we're gonna go ahead and sand this down so that the resin that is not on the port will be flat. And then we'll also kind of clean up some of this stuff so that we have a bare piece of MDF. After that, we'll go ahead and mix up some Bondo so that we can fill in the gap that's left behind and kind of cover up some of these errors that came out of my 3D printer when I was printing the flange. Sandy Bondo is a really messy process. We got dust all over the workbench, so we're going to be cleaning up quite a bit after the fact. But the port is looking extremely good. It's blended nicely with the MDF. I still have a little bit of final sanding to do. We're going to be putting some sandable primer on there to make sure that everything is blended right. We have all the holes filled. We're going for a home theater vibe with this particular enclosure. So we're going to be doing a true black stain. This is a uh, min wax. You can get this from just the standard hardware store. And here's the finished enclosure. There are a couple of cardinal rules when spraying clear coat. The first one is not to spray it in an untreated location. 
And well, as you saw in the video, I was spraying this in the driveway of the Hardware Asylum Labs. There's a little bit of wind. The biggest issue was one side of the box had direct sunlight and the other side of the box did not. And what that did was flashed off the clear before it was ready to actually flow together. So we have a fair amount of orange peel. But that can easily be remedied, especially with some of the adjustments that I need to make to the box to kind of fix a few errors that I didn't see before I sprayed all of this on. Of course, the next step in this project is to put all the electronics wire speakers inside this enclosure so that we can start testing it. I still have a few items that I need to order. Like in the prototype enclosure, we're going to be using Tang Bands. Five and a quarter inch subwoofers. These sound great and are really super efficient in the amount of airspace they require to operate. And of course we have two of those for this particular enclosure. Early in this video I mentioned Dayton Audio, which is the in-house brand for Parts Express here in the United States. And we're going to be using their KAB line of amplifiers and signal processors. What will be driving this subwoofer is primarily this amplifier right here, which is a 1 by 100 Class D amplifier. To help with connections and signal processing, I picked up this module, which is a parameter adjustment board. Basically, we will get a USB type C interface, and that will allow us to control the crossover points on this particular amplifier so that we don't need to install any coils or passive crossover devices in this box at all. Now, I do have a third device that I'm going to be mounting in this box but not using right away, which is this KAB board. And for the most part, this amplifier is almost identical to our 1x100. This has four channels at 100 watts per channel. It has onboard Bluetooth and will interface with this signal processing board. As always, if you have any questions about our subwoofer project, any comments, please leave them down below. If you want to see more from Hardware Sound, hit that subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.